If there's been one question I've received the most since the reveal of Halo Infinite's campaign gameplay is, what do you think about it? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions of what we can look forward to when it comes to Halo Infinite. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary. Today we're doing our first impressions of the Halo Infinite gameplay reveal and it's been a long time coming guys. I am... Oh, if you saw my uh, reaction video, which will be linked in the uh, description of this, uh, and uh, yeah, I was a little excited about this, but now I've had time to process it, to think about it, to observe, look over this uh, gameplay trailer more, more, and more, and more, trying to get all the nitty gritty little details about what we can find about this whole thing, and uh, this video, we're going to break it all down. So, let's get right into it. So, one thing I do want to mention is that I was finding this game just overall like visually still really fantastic i've seen some criticisms on it and we've made some videos talking about that as well previously but this dude the start screen right here now this might not be the actual start screen for halo infinite as uh most likely it's just like made for the demo itself that would be very understandable for that and um this is the very beginning of the game guys i love like the brightness of the, the color of it but it's not overly saturated but it's vibrant it's lively i love that about this game uh where it seems like it's you know, like i said but it's very bright and live lively but also somewhat realistic as well which is very important to see uh this next section here in the trailer i really really liked is when the chief wakes up the pilot and the pilot is just pissed he is not happy with chief which is something we normally haven't really ever seen before with uh a halo game usually everyone's like yes chief we will go off and complete the mission and everything's going to be great and you're going to save the galaxy once again uh but <laughs> the pilot's like i can't stand you anymore <laughs> like i'm you know i can imagine though like this guy's been at a drift for months out in space finally thinks he's going home and she's like now we gotta land on the ring and do all the terrible things and kill all the terrible things like i'd be pissed too to be honest <laughs> Uh, and the cool thing is that we noticed that the cinematography of this does match what we saw in Discover Hope, which does match with the leak information that we did have when it comes to uh, Halo Infinite copying the same kind of cinematic style of God of War 4, of having one single take for all the cinematics, which is really works out really well with a flowing into the gameplay, which we do see in here. And guys, the door opens. The ring is there. This like co screams combat evolved where we crash landed in a pelican on the ring and we had to go out into the world and kill everything and just explore and just you know get our mission accomplished and we're doing just that but 19 years later pretty freaking insane and uh this is the first time we actually get a chance right here to jump in to see the actual gameplay when i saw this i literally squealed like a little girl no joke if you saw my reaction video you understand what i'm talking about uh, and so we get a chance to finally see the gameplay and all its awesomeness. Now, one thing I do want to bring up here is how the uh, battle, not the battle rifle, the assault rifle did look rather plain as, um, you know, we saw for Halo Reach's version of the same assault rifle, not the exact same, but like this is the MA-40, I think it's the MA-38 or something like that. Essentially the same thing. Uh, that, that assault rifle had much more wear and tear, looked like it was actually used, where this one is very clean, uh, people are even saying rubbery even though I do really like the detail of saying like the finger smudge prints on the ammo counter as well You'll see it when they pan over the sky here in just a few seconds like you can kind of see that detail that they go into Which is something really great to see which they went into that kind of detail to showcase that but not the detail to kind of show any kind of wear and tear on the uh, Weapon that seems rather yeah, I'm kind of, well, yeah, I'm kind of iffy about that one now one part i definitely need to talk about is obviously the different abilities your character has in this one this one we're showing sprint there's also clamber as well as slide returning as well my opinion on sprinting in halo is i don't mind it actually halo 5 i think did a great job of implementing sprint in the halo while also having some downsides to it much better than it did in halo 4 or halo reach and so i'm kind of all for sprinting in this game especially if it's gonna be an open world you might actually need to have sprint in the game for the game to function better as he has like sure these wide open spaces now we did make a video talking about how they, it looks like the trailer might actually have better textures than the demo uh not guaranteed confirmed but it some lighting does look better in this game than others. And that's one thing I would say that the lighting does look a little 
could use some work actually. And this part I just do, do really want to bring up here as well. This is the part where I freaked out. I'm like, oh my god, it's open world Halo. Yes, it is. But uh, as you can tell by these different sections, but it does kind of seem odd that they're kind of broken up like this. So maybe there's some way you have to like connect these pieces together in some way to create bridges or something like that. I'm just kind of speculating at this point. Um, interesting thing, you got the tack map, you have upgrades and then database. Database most likely being a codex for Halo Infinite, which is going to be freaking awesome. We've never had a codex. Halo would definitely benefit from having a codex. I remember having it in Mass Effect 1. I learned so much about the game. It made me enjoy it so much more going to these different worlds fighting against these different uh, enemies, coming across these different forms of life. It's just so cool to have a database, be able to refer to stuff like that. And the upgrades is kind of interesting. Are we going to like upgrade a character? I don't know. Uh, it's not really brought up. Uh, so you can also look in the bottom. You can set uh, waypoints as well. You can view your missions and it says right click into player. That probably goes in the first person view. Uh, one thing you definitely want to keep an eye on when going out of this menu, keep an eye on the lighting. As you can might see, it kind of... Um, reloads right there you see that and we'll kind of re, re go back to that real quick like uh, so you guys can see what i'm talking about we again we'll see that lightning how it kind of like has to reload everything again which obviously i think this might be kind of like rough ends of what we're seeing for the uh trailer itself with the gameplay demo now just over this ridge i want you to pay attention to this really this this ridge that's on the far distance in the middle uh, i'll point out here as well so right here you can kind of see we have some floating trees and uh, we'll have some geometry that kind of pops in as well. Uh, obviously, when you're playing the game or when you're in the, watching the trailer for the first time, you don't notice these kind of things. But when you kind of keep watching, you kind of start noticing these little flaws like this. You can see it pop in right here. Look at that. Pops right into the texture. Those textures pop right in. The geometry pops in, actually. And we have some pop-in clouds that come in later as well. I'll point this out when those come in throughout this video and um I, throughout watching this gameplay i wasn't really able to tell if it was projectile or uh hit scan when it comes to your precision weapons uh, i do one thing i want to point out as no as well as you we watch this weapon right here it has a outlined lighting around it very much like we saw in halo 5 i actually like that a lot it just really helps kind of bring your eye to the whole thing uh, i really like the idea of this assault rifle kind of like a heavy assault rifle kind of like a scar h is what people were calling it which i can totally see why kind of was kind of a similar style to it as well and um, it'd be kind of interesting to see how the heavy assault rifle plays against the uh, you know regular assault rifle that we've come to know and love. Now this portion I want you to guys to keep an eye on is that the player deliberately shoots the legs in this situation to showcase this. Watch this. He starts stumbling right towards you once you shoot his legs off. Or not shoot his legs off, but like I think it's like you, looks like you shoot his armor off maybe on his legs and then he starts stumbling and take him out really easily. Now we never really experienced anything like that previously when it comes to Halo. Uh, mostly if you shoot off their helmet or they lose their shields, they kind of go like this berserk mode kind of thing, which is what we've seen before. And um, with this game, we've never really had like any individual body pieces to shoot at. So that's kind of interesting to look at. I'm gonna disable my cam real quick. Just to show you guys this bottom portion right here. This is where the equipment location is gonna pop up. And it looks like it's gonna be, uh, this is where it replaces like the grapple hook. Until this point, I'll go back a little second here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You can see the grapple hook is the equipment. And as soon as he picks up this drop wall, it replaces the grapple hook. Now when he drops the grapple hook or drop wall, then the grapple shot comes back as your ability. Now this could be that it could be like a ability that you have on you at all times during the campaign and then if you pick up something new then it uh, gets replaced with some different kind of equipment possibly I and mean, or maybe it's some kind of loadout thing we don't know now we also have to talk about the slide ability coming back from halo 5 being in halo infinite me personally i used it a ton but mainly when i was trying to do like the boost slide maneuver in halo 5 i never really used it a whole lot in game as i felt like the distance that you travel on the slide isn't really that far your speed is slowed down dramatically and i think it's maybe just kind of a fun addition that uh, you can do in game if you want but uh, for the multiplayer side of things i've always found it rather ineffective in using and most people don't bother using it too much and so with it being back in the game i'm like sure why not Again, here's another sec okay, here's the section I want to talk about, guys, and showcase the uh, the pop-in clouds. Keep an eye on these clouds over here. As we go up this elevator, you can see those clouds kind of pop in. 
kind of interesting. And also just like the general flatness of the texturing of these pillars that we see as well. Again, that could just be Infinite's way of having such a large world, but reducing resources on the system. That could definitely be the case. Uh, but it's just like you really see that they really kind of overuse this pillar look as you can see like we got over here just pillars 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 and it kind of like takes away from the beauty of the environment that they've created with this like if you remember back in the halo infinite announcement trailer we didn't have these pillars at all it was just open ground you can traverse no problem uh, obviously that was two years ago so definitely things could change from then um and so you know that's kind of like one of the things i have concerns about am i like freaking out like oh my god this game's not even finished no like there's plenty of time to work on this this was probably done maybe around the end of may this is definitely something that we're planning to show for e3 and it just didn't get i was shown because e3 was canceled uh there's that brute uh or i should say the banished phantom a lot of people have been kind of hating on that phantom I don't really mind it at all. Those, dude, the yeeted, the yeeted freaking grunts is freaking hilarious. I love it. You get to check it out right here. I thought it was just like a, like a grunt who got hops. Look at that. <laughs> the brute just yeets the freaking grunt out of the way. It's so hilarious. I love it. I, I, I love it. I love it. Now, here's another thing that we definitely need to talk about is the clamber ability is back in Halo Infinite from Halo 5. Now, me personally, I don't mind the clamber ability. I thought it was kind of a cool thing to add to the game. Uh, some people are really mad about it, saying it removes crouch jumping. I completely disagree with that from multiplayer side of things because obviously when you're clambering, your weapon is down. And if you allow the game to have options for you to do crouch jumps as well instead, then why not have that ability in there as well? And again, with Halo Infinite, the multi we've only seen the campaign. This is multiplayer will play out probably completely different as well as with the slip space engine. You can modify it exactly how we want the game to play out as well. So don't be so close minded, keep an open mind. And uh, I don't think having clamber in the game is such a bad thing. Uh, you can see the Ravager and the Pulse uh, Carbine. The Ravager looks freaking amazing. Like, I just want to keep shoot. I want to shoot this gun now. Like, why can't I do that? I want to do it now, <laughs> you know? Um, I will say that one thing I did find that was kind of uh, a little obstructive when it comes to the uh, gameplay is that when your shields recharge, it's uh, really obstructive. You'll see it here again. Uh, this part is actually my favorite section of the whole thing. I cannot stop looking at this i'm going to be doing this the entire campaign grapple hooking a fusion coil to throw it at something like that's hilariously awesome hilariously awesome i am super excited about this all right guys so now taking some damage here i'll show you again when he does actually recharge his shields you'll see that shield flare signal again uh, pop up okay so it doesn't I guess it doesn't show up when he's in a vehicle that's kind of interesting uh, we have a different shotgun right here like, there's that shield flare again like it's i feel like it's really blinding and obstructive if, i mean you can keep that look that's fine but maybe reduce it in half of how prevalent it is on the screen because right now it's just like it's a little much like it's a little much <laughs> uh, i want to scoot back just a little bit here to watch this brute over here Watch him get shot in the back, and he reaches for his back right there. I really like that feature. I think that's awesome that they're showing that kind of detail when it comes to like dealing damage to these characters. Uh, and so we can kind of watch that shield flare again. Like, look how large these hexagonal shapes are. Like, if we went like half of this on the screen, you know, that would be much more beneficial, I feel. Uh, I don't need to be like blinded every time my shields recharge. I think that's a little excessive. Again, that's something that could totally change with the gameplay uh, of uh, Halo Infinite as the slip space engine has de you know, opened up so many different possibilities when it comes to uh, updating this game and changing different aspects so the community gets to enjoy the Halo game that they want to love as much as I do as well. Now the last part over here, we get a nice awesome dialogue from, I believe it's uh, Eshram, I think is how you pronounce his name again. And dude, he's just like, your tip. he's just like a solid villainy bad guy. And you're like, well, I do like this guy though, because he's just like, Spartan, I want you to give me your best because I want to have a true champion fight, which is just like exactly what I want to see in a brute. I think it's like awesome chance, like, oh, hell yeah. Let's bring it on, dude. I'm ready for you. I, you know, I want, I want to take you on. Come at me, bro. Let's see what happens. Overall, guys, like this thing is exciting. I am super excited about Halo Infinite moving forward. 
I can't wait to make more content and talk about this. I will definitely be uploading more and more and more content for you guys on this channel so you get a chance to see all the awesomeness that Halo Infinite has to offer to us, guys. I am super excited about this. I cannot wait for this game to release. It's going to change my life. It's going to change all of our lives. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to tap that like button. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.